Hello, plant friends. Hope you guys are all staying happy and healthy out there in real life land. You know, with this pandemic and plant prices being just absolutely insane. Uh, the best way you can get the best bang for your buck and value for your money and find plants on the cheap is to find those plants that are, you know, under the radar, the ones that aren't quite popular and trending on Instagram yet. So uh, here's Dennis and uh, he's going to be sharing with us three under the radar plants that you need in your collection before they get above the radar. <laughs> hey, Piney folks. This is Dennis, Big Daddy Piney on Instagram. First, I want to say thanks to Jimmy for inviting me onto his channel uh, to discuss some of the plants on my collection. Plants that don't get um, displayed or shown off that often. Um, they're not these the stereotypical Instagrammable plants, but uh, for me, I find them really cool. They are unique, they look a little funky, um, and they display like some very interesting characteristics to them that needs to be shown more on people's Instagrams and on YouTube and talked about more in the planning community. I'm gonna go over three that are, on my, that are, are in my collection. Um, I'm gonna start off with the smallest one first, which is my Hoortheopsis. Cortata. I'm definitely butchering the name. This guy is a succulent, right? Um, you can kind of tell from the shape. I am obsessed with this plant. I actually have two of them in my collection. I gave one away to a friend um, just because I, I love the way um, they grow. So every time I see this extremely long one, I think of a like dragon, a dragon's tail, dragon scales. Um, they're just really an interesting growth pattern as to like how every single leaf, um, I'm assuming these are considered leaves, grows and how they can actually split apart um, into other sections of growth as they're growing. So this has been something that I've like had for I think over two years now. Um, and it's usually what I do is just take off one of its pups and put in brand new, well-draining soil, and they root really easily. You water maybe once every 10 days, and I just admire it from a distance, uh, just because it's such a cool looking plant to, to have. Um, but yeah, but this is Hoortheopsis, Corcata. I hope Jimmy is able to add the names of these plants, because I, like I said, am not an expert at saying plant names or speaking in Latin, so. That's this one. The next plant I have, I will definitely butcher the name on this plant. I cannot say it, but it is a Pedalanthus, um, AKA Devil's Backbone. Now, I know a lot of people like love the look of like Sensiviria, right? They, it's a very architectural, structured, um, like, statement plant. It just looks like it belongs in in books of archi architecture, right? Well, I think the same thing goes for Devil's Backbone. It's like, especially the way you can um, like prune them um, into growing the way you want them to. And with this guy, um, holds a even like more value in my heart because my mother-in-law, who knows I'm crazy and obsessed with plants, um, as part of uh, uh, my wedding gift from her, she actually got me this plant, which started off as a little, little guy. Um, and this is kind of where he's at now. With the devil's backbone, they grow zigzag, right? And every zig where they zag, a leaf comes out. So for this one in particular, it's a variegated kind. And I really love keeping it as a single stalk and just letting it grow taller and taller and just showing off its leaves. I, I think this plant um, just looks amazing to stare at. Like you cannot deny these leaves, the size of the leaves, <laughs> the size of the plant. It, this to me is a statement plant. You sit this down and people are gonna be, what is that? Where, like, where did you get it? Like, how is it growing like that? Um, I think this plant says it all. 
uh, it's, it, yeah, to me it's, it's amazing. Like I said, it's, it's really interesting because it's kind of more of a shrubbier type of plant, but the way you can prune it, you can get it to look something like this. I actually have another one um, in my collection that's like kind of behind me. And this one, the other one creates more of cup shaped leaves. And for that one, I've actually let the main stem, you know, become thicker and actually prune the top of it. So it kind of started to have more of a tree look to it. Um, and this one, I wanted the straight, like kind of like I said, that well thin Sansevieria one leaf kind of uh, statement. So that's my Padamanthus. All right, now I'll move on to the last one that doesn't get talked about a lot, kind of. I don't think it gets talked about that often. Uh, it's, but the, the, the species does. So it's philodendron, what a surprise. Everybody knows what a, knows philodendron. Everybody knows there's so many different kinds. Um, but for this one, I just, I love like everything about its shape, its leaves, its colors. It, it doesn't even look like it's anything special, but it's special to me. And that is my philodendron, butchering the name, Corsinium, I think, but it's a hybrid. So I don't know exactly what hybrid it has with it. What I really, really enjoy about this plant is the leaf shape. So if you look right here, it gives you the stereotypical, like, you know, arrowhead shape, but I love the waves on the leaf itself. This plant is a mover. Wherever the light is shining, the, I, <laughs> you can tell that the lights were shining this way because every leaf is just facing that way. That where, like wherever the light shines is where it will move. It, it will move up and down, side to side, wherever it wants. Um, and I think that's really cool. I, I don't get to see this plant like really on anywhere else, um, which I mean, I don't think it's like anything that's rare or valuable. I wouldn't go into that <laughs> conversations or topics. But um, what I really, really love about it, on top of the shape and the waviness is that on the leaf itself, and I don't know if it will show on camera, is that it goes into a dark and light color. Like it's really interesting. Like if you were painting like a white canvas and you did like one stroke of a color and you kind of see that white that still comes through but the color, so it's like a, like if you were coloring with a pink, you will get like a dark pink and a light pink. That's kind of what it is with the green here. It's like you see streaks of the light and the dark and at first I was you know when I got this plant it was not as tall as it was now and most of these were just pure green but as it's matured and you can tell that as it's matured the leaves have gotten bigger the waviness have got have has become more pronounced um, but what has also happened is the fact that the colors have become more of um, like I said this paintbrush looking dark green with light green it drives me crazy just looking at this plant because I constantly think like how much more beautiful can you get <laughs> um but yeah so this is like I said philodendron butchering its name corsinum uh hybrid that's all I have for you guys today um once again I want to thank Jimmy for inviting me on to his channel um to discuss what I have in my collection and and the opportunity just to show off things that you know don't get seen that often a or b you know the, the that isn't also, that aren't plants that are, are, you know, priced to a ridiculous amount where you don't think you can get them because uh, I can tell you right now, a devil's backbone, at least here in Texas, didn't say that earlier, San Antonio, Texas over here, I, I don't know if I, I can go to any nursery and find a devil's backbone. Um, now, are they variegated or not? That doesn't matter. Uh, same thing goes for Haworthias or Horotheopsis, which is the new classification for so Horotheus, you can kind of get them anywhere as well. Philodendrons for this one um, wasn't even that expensive. I think this plant was like 20 bucks for me. Um, but yeah, I, I, just something different than your everyday, no, not hating on anybody, but like, you know, Pothos or Monstera, you get to see something different. Um, but as I continue to ramble on, let me just cut it here uh, and say thank you, Jimmy. And once again, if you have any questions for me, guys, you can find me on Instagram. It is Big Daddy Plenty. All right, bye, guys.
Guys, Dennis is not a YouTuber. He does not do this on the camera sharing thing normally. Uh, thank you so much, Dennis, for stepping out of your comfort zone and sharing your favorite plants, your underrated plants for all of us to you know, know about and add to our collection. Guys, if you wanna share your collection or care tips or favorite plants or setups or, I don't know, kids, animals, hobbies, I don't know, anything, uh, reach out to me on Instagram um, and we'll try to, you know, share joy together. Uh, till next time, happy planting.